five at six. This is eight news now. Have you had anything to drink? No. Are you taking any prescription meds or anything? No. You don't take any prescription meds? Uh uh, no. Did you take anything today? No. That is Nevada Highway Patrol investigating one of our state's deadliest crashes. It was in December of last year. A truck driver plowed into a group of cyclists on the 95 right near search like killing five. So now after a months long investigation, the I-team confirms troopers did not suspect that driver was impaired. Our I-team's David Charns here with why that affected this whole case, David. Well, Jordan Barson was high on meth so much. A toxicologist wrote the amount in his blood is often seen in overdoses, but that critical element to this whole DUI case was discovered without a warrant. I don't, I don't have reason to believe he's uh, under influence, but he's obviously just wrong. It's just one of the many times Nevada Highway Patrol troopers say they don't think a driver who had just killed five cyclists was impaired. I didn't smell anything. Though. I think he's just distracted. He's, he's, I mean, obviously, considering what happened, he said he thinks he fell asleep. I tend to really believe that. Well, yeah, it's a long street drive. Troopers smell. didn't smell anything because Jordan Barson wasn't impaired from alcohol. A blood test would show enough methamphetamine in his system to overdose. I don't smell anything on him, but we need to check him for 55. And then we're going to see if he'll do a voluntary blood drop. It's around 10 a.m. on December 10th, 2020. Over the course of 50 minutes, troopers wearing their body cameras document every piece of pavement. Among metal and pieces of bike strewn across US 95, five white sheets mark the dead. His pure joy was just being out there on a beautiful day riding his bike. Which Donna Trauger's hard. husband, Tom, was among the victims. One of the things I'm really grateful for is that I was awake that morning, that um, we talked and that I got to see him before he left for his ride. 57-year-old Tom Trauger had joined the plan 130-mile-long trek to celebrate. Another rider was retiring. A second had a birthday. Not soon after the crash that Thursday morning, Donna answered a Facebook message. It was another writer asking her to call. He started crying and he just said, I'm really sorry. And, and I started crying and I said, please just say it, just tell me. And he said, Tom was killed. But it would be hours before she knew for sure. Tom Trauger wore a GPS watch in the event of an emergency. I got a text message from Garmin with Tom's GPS coordinates because I was his emergency contact. Those coordinates said Tom was at the Clark County Coroner's office. As troopers worked to identify the dead, they also worked on the living. Have you had anything to drink? No. You taking any prescription meds or anything? No. You don't take any prescription meds? Uh-uh, no. Did you take anything today? No. They're trying to convince Barson to submit to a voluntary blood draw and their window is closing. One of the things that happened with you possibly get your driver's license system. One of the things to think about, I know it's a lot to process. If Barson didn't agree, a judge would have to sign off on a warrant. It's not a matter of us suspecting impairment. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Minutes earlier, a trooper put Barson through a standard field sobriety test. As Barson was going through the motions, another trooper looking on says this. He's having a hard time standing up, period. This report saying the trooper would ultimately deem the results unsatisfactory as Barson was, quote, shaking uncontrollably and was an emotional wreck. And because they didn't suspect impairment, troopers then sent Jordan Barson on his way back to Arizona that day. In 15 minutes, we'll show you what happened next. I'm David Charns, live, local, now. Now, this is 8 News Now, live at 6.30, live, local, now. And thank you for staying with us at 6.30. I'm Denise Valdez. And I'm Brian Loftus. NHP troopers didn't suspect impairment in a driver who had just killed five cyclists on a straight road on a clear day. Our I team's David Charns continuing his investigation with what troopers missed. David? A blood test would show Jordan Barson had enough meth in his system to overdose, but nobody at that crash site knew that or picked up a phone to call a judge. And without suspecting impairment, troopers need Barson to agree to a voluntary blood draw. Here's how they got it. I don't, I don't have reason to believe he's uh, under influence, but 
now, but yeah, he's obviously just wrong. It's just one of the many times Nevada Highway Patrol troopers say they don't think a driver who had just killed five cyclists was impaired. I didn't smell anything. I think he's just distracted. He's, he's, I mean, obviously, yeah. considering what happened, he said he thinks he fell asleep. I tend to really believe that. Well, yeah, it's a long street driving. Nevada Highway Patrol troopers investigating one of the deadliest crashes in years didn't smell anything because Jordan Barson wasn't impaired from alcohol. He had as much methamphetamine in his system as is often seen in overdose victims. Just yards from where body cameras roll, five cyclists lie dead in the road. Will, will you volunteer and, and cooperate with that? Will you volunteer for the blood draw? With impairment not suspected, troopers are trying to convince Barson to submit to a voluntary blood draw. I think about what I was talking to you about giving us a voluntary, all right? Uh, so at this point, we just need to know a yes or a no. In all, troopers ask Barson if he'll consent five times. This is how the trooper wrote about those times in his report. After a while, I asked him if he would submit to a blood draw. He said that he would provide a blood sample. A Nevada Highway Patrol, they didn't, they didn't get a search warrant in the case, and it had to do with they didn't suspect DUI. Former Deputy District Attorney Thomas Moskal was the lead prosecutor on the case. Ultimately, uh, that had negative consequences for down the road because this became a huge DUI case. A case leading to five counts of DUI resulting in death. Barson ended up pleading guilty to two, a judge sentencing him to 16 to 40 years in prison Moscow simply saying NHP didn't do its job. Victim blaming. I mean, it was offensive. You know, Nevada Highway Patrol got there and immediately the cyclists are in the middle of the road. He points to this. It's when the troopers realized the cyclists were riding in the right lane or the number two. They were in the number two. Yeah. They were riding in you the can't number do two. That. No. But the Nevada Department of Transportation says cyclists are allowed to ride on this rural section of US 95. There is no rule barring them from the right lane. They were allowed to be there in the road. But even if they weren't, I don't see how when five cyclists get killed too seriously injured, um, that an investigator at the scene says, oh, they were in the, they were in the road at 10 a.m. on a brightly lit day and somehow this is not a, not a criminal act anymore. It's not a matter of us suspecting impairment. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Moscow is critical of those comments, where he says the troopers seemingly try to convince Barson to give in, even though he had just killed five people on a clear day on a straight road. They never called the judge. Uh, the blood with the methamphetamine would never make it to the jury. Two weeks after Barson's blood results came back, showing he had nine times the limit of meth in his blood for what prosecutors need to file charges, an NHP drug recognition expert filed her report based on what she saw in the videos. His performance on the standardized field sobriety tests showed numerous clues of impairment. When we don't suspect any signs of impairment. The trooper adding, I observed no signs or indication of a person who was tired and Mr. Barson was under the influence of a stimulant. It's obvious to me, and I'm not even trained. Nearly a year after Jordan Barson killed her husband, Donna Trauger says she has never heard from NHP. Jordan Barson's in prison for two deaths, not five. He's certainly ser serving time for the crime that he committed, but he is not serving the correct sentence for the crimes that he committed. And that's because the troopers didn't do their jobs that day. It reminds her to do something Tom used to tell her often. He would say, let it go. If I had a dollar for every time he said, let it go to me, I'd be very rich. But I can't let this one go. Not this one. NHP and the Department of Public Safety, which oversees the agency, declined several on-camera interview requests, but they did send me a statement and it says this. These crashes can be avoided if drivers make smart decisions. And they go on to say that they have reviewed this investigation and are improving techniques and training. When we ask how NHP is doing that and what changes have been made, I did not get a response. I'm David Charns, live, local, now.